peace, joy, and hope. If you ask me, it's a trio that's even better than cookies and milk and, well, more cookies. Who turned out the lights? So what's stopping us? Why aren't you and I happy, peaceful, and vibrant with hope every single day of our lives? Oh yeah, I remember why. Stuff. All the stuff that happens all around us, all the time, relationship stuff, career stuff, money stuff, making a home, making a living, and making do with unmet needs in any category, broken dreams, big boo-boos, little letdowns, memories that hurt, shoes that pinch, bosses that pinch, the pincher next door that ate your cat. Or maybe it's swimsuits that shrink two sizes over the winter, shrinking eyebrows that ring around your toilet bowl, that ringing in your ears, and the wedding ring on the finger of the cute guy you just met in the peanut butter aisle of your local Piggly Wiggly. It could be that bad news phone call, that cr the creep that broke your daughter's heart, the promotion that went to the assistant you hired on the same day your fortune cookie said, it doesn't look good, maybe you should have stayed in bed. Nine months ago, I had a significant relationship stop at a dime and propel me into a good five months of depression. When I think back on memories from those months, the images that come back to my mind are really dark. And I mean, literally. I remember charcoal storm clouds gathering over the forest outside my bedroom window. The chilly twilights morphing into starless evenings, shadows in my room in the middle of the day. What strikes me now is that the relationship ended in June. June? Where I live, June is the month with the sunniest mornings, longest days, and brightest skies. And yet most of my memories from that time are framed in shadows. So why aren't you and I glowing with all the happiness, inner calm, and hope that we desire and adore? Well, because pretty much every day of our lives, something, somewhere is happening in our individual world that if we let it, condemn those good feelings. In fact, sometimes our circumstances can really trip us up, sending us plunging into complete emotional darkness and even despair. Looking for peace, joy, and hope in all the wrong places. There's no design, denying that our circumstances produce the seeds of joy, pain, triumph, sorrow, and more. And actually, it is a good thing that the stuff in our lives gets on our nerves and under our skin. This is because people who remain completely unmoved by anything life sends their way are not only experiencing a psychotic break with reality, but should probably think twice before standing in front of an oncoming truck. I think where I go wrong isn't that I let my circumstances influence my emotional well-being. Too, too often I let them determine my emotional well-being. In other words, I'm convinced we get into trouble when we get in the habit of drawing our peace, joy, hope, as well as our purpose, direction, and motivation from our circumstances and nothing else. I like to think of peace, joy, and hope as internal forces, kind of like muscles. After all, they give us strength, they can determine our path, get us moving, and keep us on track. They help us embrace and even change our world. My friend Cindy raises three kids, one neurotic friend, me, and a couple of horses, all from a wheelchair due to a boating accident 12 years ago. I asked her which she would rather live without, the full use of her legs, or emotions like peace and joy and hope. Her answer, do you have this yet? So if peace, joy, and hope are internal forces, emotional muscles, and vital ones at that, why in the world would we relinquish power over these vital muscles to external forces, some of which we can control, but many of which we can't? After all, we wouldn't give complete and utter control of our physical muscles to outside influences, like say, Hollywood celebrities, would we? What if we could use our legs only when Brad and Andrew
Angie adopted another baby. What would happen if we could flex our fingers only on days Britney Spears made Yahoo headlines, or we could turn our head only when Johnny Depp released a new Pirates flick? The image that comes to mind is that of a marionette. I can't speak for anyone else, but I don't want my limbs jerked around by anyone who made the cover of the Weekly World News. So why should I let my emotional muscles get jerked around by external circumstances over which I have limited or no control? Well, we're going to stop there for now. I will read more from Karen Linneman's Light at the End of the Tunnel tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. This is Carla from Truth on a Treadmill and I'm very winded right now. Have a blessed day.